When I first uploaded this video, the thumbnail looked like this. As you can see, the canvas was blank. And depending on when you click this video, I'm guessing it looked just a little bit different. That's because over the last couple of days, I've been writing and testing a Python script that will convert your YouTube comments into pixels that are automatically painted onto the thumbnail. But wait, before you click the back button to go check it out, just give me a few moments of your time so I can show you how it works and how collectively you and anyone else who comments can help create the thumbnail for this video. Let's go. With the last video I uploaded, I was trying to find the perfect thumbnail. After changing it a few times and then watching the numbers, doing a Twitter poll, ultimately I wasn't really satisfied with my results. So then I came up with an idea. What if I let my viewers decide what the thumbnail should look like? What could possibly go wrong? So I'll admit, I'm not the first person to automate YouTube thumbnails and titles. Far from it. Most notably, the first time I saw this done was a video by Tom Scott, where he updated the video title as the views increased. The first thumbnail automation I saw was a video by Mr. Beast where he changed the dollar amount in the image also as the views went up. What's unique to this one is that you, the viewer, are able to directly modify the thumbnail just based on your comments. Now on the hardware side of things, I'm going to be constantly monitoring the thumbnail on this cool screen I got for the Pi. As it updates, I'll see the changes and anything that happens. And in a worst case scenario, I wired up this emergency stop button That'll stop any new thumbnails from being uploaded to YouTube and give me some time to fix any issues that arise. So this is how it works. And keep in mind, some of these numbers are subject to change, mostly in case of things break like the YouTube API or spam filters. But every five minutes, my Python script, which is running on a Raspberry Pi, will ask YouTube for a bunch of the latest comments on this video. And whenever comments are less than five minutes old, it will keep them. With any of the kept comments, the first thing it does is checks to see if there is a dollar sign, dollar sign at the start of it. This tells the script that the person who submitted the comment wants to post pixels on the thumbnail. From there, it'll further analyze the YouTube comment, looking for any integer values within it. Once it has found a set of five numbers within the comment, that will be the first pixel. It will continue finding integers within the comment adding up to all the pixels until the comment ends or it's found a total of 64 pixels because that's the max amount of pixels each commenter can do per comment. If any of the numbers that have been collected by this are out of the boundary conditions that I've set up for the pixel, then it will just discard them and it won't post them. I've also decided that if someone posts a comment without the dollar sign dollar sign, it will post just a small 4x4 square of a random color at a random location, just for a little more entropy. So let me explain the parameters for the pixel. X, Y, R, G, B. X and Y are the coordinates of the start of the pixel on the canvas. So for this canvas, the top left is 00, zero and the bottom right is 838 by 563. These are just the values that the canvas ended up being based on how I designed the thumbnail. Next is the RGB. And simply put, this is the red, green, and blue values for the pixels. Changing these will change the color that the pixel is uploaded. Once it has collected all of the pixels within the comments over the last five minutes, it inserts them into the canvas image. The final step is overlaying the image that I design and uploading it to YouTube. All this happens within a few seconds. Now sending just a single pixel to the thumbnail will be really hard to find just due to the nature of compression and also the fact that YouTube thumbnails aren't very big. So as a bonus, I mangled together some code originally from Brian Locke, and that will allow you to design a tile, and then it will create a comment on how to post that tile. So if you go to seanhodgins.com forward slash tile dash maker, it will take you to this website where you can draw whatever you want, choose your colors, and there's some instructions, it's pretty straightforward. If you draw your image and click show code and copy to clipboard, it'll create the comment for you and you can actually choose where you want to display this within the boundary of the canvas. But if you just click it and you don't enter anything in, it'll just choose a random location to put it. I think we can all agree that 2020 was a difficult time for us all. And while it won't change overnight, it's fun to create things that can bring people together that are hundreds or even thousands of miles apart. As we enter the new year, I could give you an inspirational speech about how it's important for humanity to work together, 
or how we need to find new ways to stay connected, or how we shouldn't let our differences divide us. But instead, why don't we all just draw some pixels on this thumbnail? Right? You may not be aware of this, but all of these projects that I post to this channel are free and open source. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Get some notifications so you know exactly when I release my next project. If you want to support me and my future projects, consider becoming a patron on Patreon. They allow me to purchase hardware and spend times on content like this. Also, join the Discord. It's open, it's free, you can join. Link right here. And finally, everyone, as always, be good and have a good day.